Tolman is present at Joffrey's pre-wedding reception, ceremony to Marjorie Tyrell, and during the subsequent feast. Initially, he laughs at his brother's crude play of dwarves reenacting the War of the Five Kings, but stops and looks mortified when he sees Tyrion's face. When Joffrey begins to choke and convulse from poison, Tommen looks on in shock and horror before his eyes are covered by his grandfather so he is spared the final gruesome details. With Joffrey's death, Tommen inherits the crown and is now the king and ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. Tommen later stands vigil with Cersei over Joffrey's corpse in the Great Sept of Baelor. Tywin, in an unusually agreeable mood, enters and proceeds to quiz Tommen on the traits that make a good king, ignoring Cersei's protests and angry glares. Tommen suggests holiness, justice, and strength as qualities of a good king, but Tywin refutes these answers by pointing out that Kings Baelor, Ares, and Robert were each paragons of one of these qualities, but ultimately not very good kings. Tywin is delighted when Tommen, with minimal prompting, deduces that a good king must be wise. Tywin tells Tommen that young kings with no experience can become wise by listening to their counselors, and the wisest kings keep listening even when they don't need to anymore. After admitting that Joffrey was neither good nor wise, Tywin escorts Tommen out of the Sept and begins teaching him the duties of a king's marriage, and subsequent children. On their way out, Jaime passes them and asks how Tommen is doing. The young king replies that he is all right, and Jaime assures Tommen that he will not let him meet the same end as his brother. In response to Joffrey's death, Cersei insists that Tommen be placed under high guard, with at least four king's guard at his bedroom door at night, something Jaime finds a bit excessive. Tommen has been moved to Joffrey's bedchamber and has yet to redecorate, hence, he has difficulty sleeping with Joffrey's gruesome hunting trophies all around. That night Marjorie sneaks into Tommen's chambers. She suggests that they get to know one another before their marriage, something nobles in Westeros don't usually do. Tommen is unnerved by her presence until his cat, Sir Pounce, jumps up and Marjorie interacts with him. Tommen sullenly reveals the cruel things Joffrey threatened to do to Sir Pounce, and he and Marjorie bond over their mutual relief that they are free of him. Tommen agrees that he'd like Marjorie to visit him again. Marjorie departs, but not before giving a kiss on the forehead. A ceremony is held in the Great Hall of the Red Keep where the High Septon officially crowns Tommen as king. Marjorie watches from the side, and, when questioned by Cersei, notes that he sits as comfortably in the Iron Throne as if he were born to it. Cersei and Tywin later set the date of Tommen's wedding to Marjorie immediately after the mourning period for Joffrey is over, a fortnight from the day of the coronation. On Tywin's instructions, Tommen recuses himself from presiding over Tyrion's trial for Joffrey's murder, declaring Tywin, as Hand of the King and Protector of the Realm, as his replacement. He then departs the throne room along with two Kingsguard.